Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far in, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps my channel out a lot. I also love to have uh, comments in the comment section down below, so let me know what you think, ideas for videos, all those kind of things are helpful. So thank you for that. Uh, today, uh, I have a stone that my friend John gave me, and it is Australian Verisite. And it's truly uh, a, a bright colored stone, and I really like it. It's sort of a rounded rectangle, cabochon. Uh, he cut some really pretty stuff, so and he gave this one to me last time he came over, and I've been waiting to do something with it. I think I'm going to make kind of a a pretty simple pendant out of it, just to because the stone itself is so uh, pretty. I don't want to detract too much from it with a lot of decoration. So I'm going to do something relatively straightforward, uh, make a pendant out of it. Um, and so I hope you enjoy this one. Um, before we get started, though, I should thank my um, patrons over on Patreon. Uh, they're buying my premium content, and I appreciate their support. Uh, you can check out the video description to find out more about that if you're interested. Uh, but thank you for making that such a cool environment over there. I really enjoy interacting with you guys, and I've learned so much from you. I hope you're learning uh, as much for me, but either way, thanks for all your support. I also wanted to thank my YouTube subscribers. We just passed 7,800, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd love to continue to grow, so feel free to share my uh, link to my YouTube channel with others. Uh, the more people, uh, the wider audience I can reach, the better. So uh, thank you for all of your support, both financial and the nice things that you say in the comments. So thanks for that. Let's get started on this project. All right, so let's uh, take a look at what I drew up. This is my design idea book. I draw things up most often these days. Oops. There we are. So um, these are available in my merch store. They have a nice grid in the background if you have trouble like me getting things symmetrical. <laughs> so it helps me to keep things kind of lined up. But This is the stone he gave me. It's Australian Verisite that he cut. And it's just really intense color. It's kind of a, I don't know what you call it, kind of a mint green almost. But uh, I love it. And I was trying to figure out what I should do with it. So I thought it would make a really cool kind of sleek cuff bracelet. And I may make something like that with another stone at some point. But I think I'm going to go with this, just pretty simple here. I'm just going to bezel set it here. I'm going to use a piece of thick silver that's a slab. I'm going to cut a notch in the back and then put a back plate on it so that I have a a tunnel for a chain to go through to make our bail, but it's going to be thick silver uh, made out of this slab here. Um, I cast this uh, a while back, and if you want to see how I did that, there's a link to that video right up here. Um, but I'll be cutting that out. I already scribed out the shape that I'm going to do. I want it to be kind of mirroring the shape of the stone itself a little bit like that. And then I'm going to use a piece of, I think, 14 uh, 14 gauge square wire, or not 14, uh, 10 gauge square wire right here. I'll be using 3 16 fine silver bezel strip. And for the bottom, I was going to use um, 18 gauge sheet uh, in order to give it some structural integrity since it's going to be attached uh, to the base with this piece of 10 gauge square. I normally use uh, 26 gauge sterling silver sheet for the backs of bezels, but in this case, it needs to be something a little sturdier so it doesn't isn't flimsy where it's attached to this. Um, since I don't have enough 18 to do that, I'm going to use some 22 and then I'm going to put a little reinforcement thing inside of the bezel underneath the stone and I'll show you how I do that. That's kind of a, a workaround when you don't have the kind of sheet that you need. Uh, but yeah, let's get started on making this bezel first. Uh, I think that'll be our first step. If you've never been to my channel before, I use hard silver sheet solder. It's like that, and then I use uh, uh, Mighty Flux, which is a liquid flux that I spray onto the spray bottle. Uh, my torch is a Smith acetylene torch. Uh, it's an acetylene air torch, really, and it's called the Smith Silversmith model. I've been using this for years and years, and it's a lovely torch. And that's most of the questions people ask right off the bat. This one I get asked about a lot. I use these shears for a lot of things, and they're just Fisker's craft shears. They're pretty cheap. They wear out eventually, but uh, you can get quite a bit of use out of them before you destroy them. <laughs> I have something with relatively sharp corners here. 
I don't want the bezel to meet on a corner. I want it to meet on the side somewhere, preferably one of the longer sides. So I'm going to um, make a bend so that the end of it is going to end up in that side there, just by going in about what, half an inch on this one. I guess I should have measured this stone. Let's see. It's about 25 millimeters by, I think 11, 25 by 11 ish. Okay, got a sharp bend there. Curve this just slightly since that side of the stone has a slight curve. John is one of my rock counting friends. We go out and look for rocks sometimes. nearly as much as I would like. Been too busy the past couple of years doing this. <laughs> Whenever I have a break I'm too tired to to go out and look for rocks. <laughs> I don't want to have a lot of play in my bezel on this because of the sharp corners. Corners are always problematic for people at first when they're doing bezels. There's too much metal you're trying to bend into that space when you go to set the stone. And so you have a tendency to get wrinkles. It helps a little bit if you if you get your bezel pretty snug. Mark there, we'll cut him off. to make sure not to break that stone when I'm setting it or something. I don't have a backup for that one, for sure. A couple of my earlier, uh, like real early videos when I first started doing this, I was doing a, a piece and I, I broke the stone and I didn't have any backup for it, so. What are you gonna do? Get that kind of pushing together nicely there. Solder it. I want to thank those of you who've been making financial contributions by buying me a coffee. It really helps when I have to order supplies. So thank you for that. clean my table, probably. I'm going to try and kind of get it back in the shape where it needs to be. I think we're pretty good on size. Man, that's a pretty color. I think we can get it right off of there, probably. Like I said, this is 22 gauge, and I would have rather have used 18, but we're going to improvise a little bit. Okay, 
start by just soldering it down to this piece of 22 gauge. get that flux all settled down so you can put your solder where you want it to go. In this case I find it easiest to do it on the inside of the bezel. That way any kind of sloppy solder mess is covered by the stone. Although to be fair I'm just going to trim off any outside excess on this one. So. The trick here is heating that bottom piece without overheating the, the bezel. You can get underneath it with the flame, that helps sometimes, but I don't think I'll probably need to do that on this one, as long as I'm careful. Make sure we get a seam that runs all the way around. Okay, so if you think about this, if I'm going to have this chunk of up here like this connected to the outside of that bezel with a piece of square wire, um, bezel being kind of flimsy, this is what I was talking about earlier, and the sheet not being very thick, if it gets any kind of pressure this way, it may bend the bezel. And so one way I can do that is to reinforce it inside of the bezel when I don't have thick enough sheet. And so I'm going to put a little piece of square wire along the top there, and we'll see if that doesn't uh, reinforce it a little bit. We could also run a wire all the way down to the other side, and I might do that. That, that makes the whole length of this thing much stiffer. So let's see what I can find as far as scrap wire. So really, we just need to... Uh, about how wide this needs to be. Yeah. So let's start by soldering that in there. There's a good chance there's enough solder in there, but I'm going to probably add a little bit to make sure it gets a nice good connection all the way on the, on the bezel side and the bottom side. Okay, so I'm also going to do something called pick soldering, which is where I pick up a little bit of solder on the end of the pick like this. Okay. Keep the piece up to soldering temperature. That's just about the right length if I want to run one up and down the whole length, so let's do that. Why not? I'm not sure how I had a random piece of square wire that was exactly what I needed pretty much. That was good fortune. should leave us enough space left. I will pack that other uh, area with some uh, uncorrugated uh, cardboard. And this should be just about the right height then. Uh, I'm 
on this to make it uh, be settable. So I think that'll work out just fine. I'm going to trim off the excess here. gauge and so I'm going to file this flat and cut a little piece off here and I'm going to solder it right to the top of that and then we can cut it off to whatever length we decide once we have the other piece finished. So let's, uh, let's file this down. Here. Also a way, if you don't want to make your piece, you know, extra heavy, you can also use thinner sheet that way. Save some weight. Some people are really bothered by heavy, heavy necklaces. Some people really like heavy necklaces, so you just never know. But either way, that's going to make that a lot harder to, to bend this way. Because now it's soldered kind of all the way to the bottom, basically as a single piece so that should be really nice and strong all right so the next step is going to be cutting out this piece I originally the way I did this was where my little calipers go I drew this and then I wanted it to be slightly curved on the sides but I didn't want it to be quite as small this is a little bit smaller than this and I knew this was going to be kind of not that wide yeah I got pretty close so I made it about that distance apart, and then I, I found the center point between found the center point on one side here. Describe the line. Found the center point over here on this side. And describe the line that way. That way we've got a nice curve. So I'm gonna have to use the saw to cut this out. So we'll go do that next. Welcome to my rather messy sawing area. I put a a, a one on this. On the saw here, let's see if that's a good angle. Okay, let's see if we can do a little straight sawing. <laughs> Not my strongest suit, but we'll see.
was surprising I got through that without breaking a blade. <laughs> Let me get that cleaned up with the file. So I filed this up a little bit to get it a little more regular and, and cleaned up, and I think it's pretty good. I also colored the side purple again and cut that about where I want it to be. Um, the thing that I need to do now though is, my initial thought was I was going to drill a hole through this to run a chain through, but this is, this is pretty wide, but it's not really wide enough to do that very effectively. So I'm actually going to cut a trench in it with the saw um, and then get it as close to the bottom side without, you know, uh, causing a problem with the integrity of it and then uh, soldering a piece of sheet on the back so it has more of a squarish or rectangularish uh, slot going through it so a little bit bigger chain can fit. It's still not going to take a huge chain, but I think it'll be pretty cool. So. I think the easiest way to get a nice line would be to use, use some calipers here. So I'm going to try and get my saw started on this and then we'll cut that this way and I'll try and get it to turn this way. I don't know if I can do that or not or if I'm going to have to gouge it out. I may have to, but we'll see. Let's we'll see if we can get that as straight as we can. into my rather messy sawing area. I put a, a, a one on this uh, on the saw here. Let's see if that's a good angle. Okay, let's see if we can't do a little straight sawing. <laughs> Not my strongest suit, but we'll see. <laughs> Sort of surprising I got through that without breaking a blade. <laughs> Let me get that cleaned up with the file. Okay, so I've got a trench there. If you can see that or not. It's not very even, and, but I have removed a lot of the material. So I'm going to use the Dremel to clean that up and flatten it out and make that all neat and a little bit wider. Let's see how that goes. So I don't know if you can tell, but I got that pretty well cleaned out. I'm kind of a trench going through there now. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I have some scrap 18 here that's a small piece. I'm just going to solder that down like that so it's got a nice slot through it. And then uh, we'll trim it off. And I'll attach it to this. And then I'll make a chain for it. So Let's do that next. I think the easiest way to do it will be to sweat a little bit of solder on here, flux this side, and then flip it over and just heat it till it flows.
sure everything gets hot enough to where I got good flow all the way around. just going to solder it like that. Make sure I get it as centered as I can. And then we're going to let that pickle and I'll polish it and then I'll set the stone for you. That is straight as I'm going to get that, probably. Okay, I'm going to let that pickle, and then I'll come back and finish for you. Okay, so I got things pretty much polished up. I filled in those uh, cavities uh, on either side on the back uh, with just a little sliver of tag board, and then uh, it turned out to be just about the right uh, depth after that, so I'm just going to go ahead and set it. Most people use a bezel pusher and a burnishing tool. I just use my uh, chain nose pliers. But we're going to start on these corners. These corners, uh, when I have sharp corners on a stone like this, oftentimes I'll thin out the metal just a little bit so that there's less metal to compress into that corner because sometimes you get wrinkles there. But during polishing, I got them a little bit thin anyway, so I think we're good. So I'm going to start on the corners, and I'm going to try and do this sort of gently, because I'd be mortified if I broke John's beautiful stone here. But I kind of want to make sure those corners are safe you know, from getting chipped or anything. Just using the flat side of this here. And now, uh, I think I got it curved over just a little bit. I'm going to just kind of push this in straight. Sometimes when you're doing this, you push on one side and it pooches out the other side, so you need to kind of go back and forth until you squish that metal down against the stone. Alright, and once you do, then I'm going to use this rounded outer part of the chain nose to just burnish that top edge there a little bit. So I will, uh, I made while this was pickling, I made up a little 18 inch chain and I put a very small uh, end jump ring on it so that it would fit through this right here. We should be able to just pull it through. there. Let's see how close we are to my drawing. Pretty close. That's kind of what I was going for. I think it'll be pretty. Don't forget to visit uh, the link in the video description uh, where you can find some stones that John has cut. Uh, I think he's a very talented and I'm very pleased with the stone. Is. And if you tell him that I sent you, maybe he'll be willing to give me some more stones, you know? This one was just out of the kindness of his heart, but, you know, maybe if you start buying his stones, he'll feel obligated to give me some, too. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. 
All right, well, that was the Verisite uh, pendant that I made from uh, the stone that my friend John gave me. I'm going to put a link to his uh, store in my video description down below, so you should definitely give him a check out. He's got reasonable prices, and he produces some really beautiful stones, so check it out uh, in the video description. Um, uh, some other things in the video description are uh, <clears throat> my merch store is there, my website is there, there's a link to buy me a coffee if you want to help out with supplies, uh, and there's a link to my Patreon as well. So check those things out. Uh, don't forget to like the video, and I'd love to have you subscribe. So thanks for coming by. Take care. Happy Silver Snow.